Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy and today we are talking all about miters. The rare, the elusive, the mysterious, perfect miter. So getting that perfect miter can be a challenge. Now we've tuned our saws the best we can, you know, and if you're just getting into woodworking or even been in it for a few years, you understand that miters are like hard, okay? Now I'm gonna show you today something that makes them really, really easy. i show you how to tune in your equipment to make them easier and also show you some versatility or some versatility. Banana. So if you've been in woodworking for just a short period of time or even a few years, you understand that getting a good miter joint can be a little bit tricky. Just getting a good 45 on a picture frame, you know, we've built special sleds for them, we do all kinds of crazy things, but if you wanna go beyond that, like 22 and a half degree angles, 36.2758 degree angles, and all the other ones that you need to make segments, like this one, it can get really tricky. Well, I'm gonna show you something that I got introduced to three years ago today. I've been using it all the time because it's amazing and it makes miters really easy. So we're also gonna take a look at that and we're gonna look at how it can be functional for other pieces of equipment in the shop other than just a table saw. And um, I think that's it. So this is a miter set. I first did a video about this exactly three years ago today to the month, to the month, not the day. And I've been using these ever since. Now they're absolutely amazing for setting up your angles. Now it works with loud. It works with just your regular table saw miter gauge. And the way it works is let's say I wanted to make a seven segmented round. I would put my pin in the seven, my second pin in the zero, and then I would just loosen up my gauge to that. Oh yeah, this thing. And then push it tight up against those two pins and tighten it down. Now I have the perfect angle for cutting seven segmented rounds. So there's two different miter sets. There's one that goes up to 20 segments. So this one goes from four segments all the way up to 20 segments and the varying degrees. And there's a second miter set that can go just angles or angles of degrees. So I can put a, let's say I want a 45. I just put the pin in the zero and go to the 45. But if I want a partial somewhere between 45 and 50, I use this little guy who's got little steps on it for different numbers of degrees. So this one, I leave this one in the case. This is the one I take with me when I go to friend's house and use their table saws and then show off that I can get perfect miters on their table saws without having to do anything. And when I take the job sites, I use this a lot for like selecting degrees for doing crown molding, cutting crown molding on the flat on a job site saw. So this is really a handy one to keep mobile. Now the other one I use in my table saw, right? Embedded it in the wing of my table saw so it's it's always here. And I use it quite frequently, quite frequently. And usually what I use it for most is setting up a perfect 90 degree cut. So to do that, I just put them in the two zero pins. And now I know this thing is exactly at 90 degrees. So to make sure that the miter set is gonna work properly with your table saw, your table saw blade needs to be as in line with the miter slot as possible. Now to check that, you don't need a bunch of fancy tools. In this case, I'm just using a square and a feeler gauge, and I'm gonna mark the tooth that I wanna use. So I'm using the same tooth, and I'm gonna measure it from both the front and the back. Now I've already set up my square, so it's just touching the tooth. If you can hear that. Now I'm gonna move that tooth all the way to the front. I'm also gonna make sure my, my square is in the same position it was in the back and it's not quite touching. So I'm gonna grab my feeler gauges. They do make them that go down further than this, but mine only goes down to six thou, and I can slide that in there. Oop, make sure the tooth is lined up. And if I can slide, I'm sliding it in there and it's touching both. So mine is probably five or six thousandths out. And coming straight from the factory, that's not bad. Now, if I'm doing a seven segmented piece like this one, and I don't get these exactly the right distance, and I'm talking within you know a fairly small amount so you need to use a really good positive stop that can add up over a period of six different or seven different cuts or in this case eight different cuts and two cuts per piece so there's 16 cuts in here to make this one seven segmented round 
at 5 thousandths of an inch, I'm gonna live with that. You can definitely dial it in more than that. A lot of guys do, but I'm okay with that. But that's gonna mean when I do segmented rounds, I may end up with a small gap right here that I may have to force together. I'm not worried about that. I'm still gonna get really good results. If you take a look at that, that's not a bad joint. This right here is the Osborne miter gauge, and it is my favorite miter gauge on the market. And the reason being is because of the way the, the fence actually attaches to the slot and the component. I have this huge difference here. So there's this big triangle of support that keeps this extremely rigid when I set it to whatever angle I want. So if I need to change the angle, I actually do that here instead of behind here. And with behind here, most miter gauges like this one, there's only this short distance. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I certainly don't trust it as much as I trust this. And a nice thing about having the miter set in my saw right here is that when I need to set up my, my Osman, it's just as easy. I just pull the pins off my table saw fence and add them here. And if I want to do a seven, I'll do that. Loosen this up, slide it in nice and tight. And now I'm set at a perfect angle for seven segments. Another advantage of the Osborne is I have a positive stop here, and if I need extra length, it has an outfeed. So that makes it really handy. Paired up with the miter set, this is a very powerful killer tool for getting some great, great results. Another really valuable thing about having a miter set in the shop is I can cut a piece at let's say the seven segmented round, you know, round, and then I can change the angle of my blade to match that. So I could do seven sided pillars if I wanted to. Using the miter gauge, we went ahead and cut that piece for a seven segment. Now we can use that as a gauge to set up lots of things in the shop, like our table, like our chop box. And the other nice thing is that the miter set becomes a tool to get very accurate angles on lots of different things in the shop. So you can make gauges to set your bevel square to, and basically any miter sled or miter fence that you have in your shop, you can use the miter set to set it up at a perfect angle, the angle that you want. So I have my miter set inset in my saw because I use it constantly, but you don't have to. And it has a really nice kind of a felt or foam rubber pad on the back for those of you who don't wanna go through the trouble of putting it into your table saw. Uh, I know this has been a real miter set heavy video and it's been intentional. I really wanted to promote this today and show how easy it makes making really complex miters truly easy and you can get some really powerful results with it now i've been using this for three years it's been great for me it's never let me down as long as my saw is tuned in i get great results every time so my buddy jack used to own it now he now works with the company that does and they were kind enough to give me an affiliate link uh, for these and that'll be in the description box below the video so if you want to help support the channel and you want to get super crazy accurate miters hit that link down below and go check that out. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video.